Welcome to Sunday School. My name is Daniel Kumpla, and I will lead the lesson today. This is the first of a series of online Sunday School lessons we'll do throughout this school year. We'll start today's lesson with song 357, The Will of God is Always Best. After the song, we'll say our opening prayers and creed together, as we always do at Sunday School. Let's fold our hands 
and recite the opening prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thy children lift up our voices in praise for thy great goodness for us. We thank thee for all gifts thou hast given us, needful for our bodies and souls. We thank thee for our loving parents. But above all, we thank thee for giving us thy dear Son, our Lord Jesus, to save us from sin. Dear Jesus, be with us today. Open our hearts to thy love. Protect us from temptation and sin. If we sin, cause us to repent and confess our sin, and give us power to always believe that our sins are forgiven us in thy holy name and precious blood. Bless our teachers. Bless each child. Take us to thy heavenly home. Amen. Now we'll recite the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So today's lesson is going to be on Jonah and the whale. It's a very familiar story to all of us. We're going to begin the lesson by reading the story of Jonah as it's written in the small catechism. And there's a few lessons that we can all learn from this lesson. A few of those lessons are going to be obedience, serving at home, serving in God's kingdom, forgiveness. Listen, during while I'm reading this story from the small catechism, and see if you can hear any of those examples. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee from the presence of the Lord, and went in a ship to go elsewhere. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. The mariners were afraid, and every man cried unto his God. But Jonah was gone down into the ship and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said, Arise, call upon thy God. They said one to another, Let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. He said unto them, Cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So they cast Jonah into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. The Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. He was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. And the Lord let the fish vomit out Jonah upon the dry land. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, 
that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Jonah went into the city and cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God and cried unto him and turned from their evil way. God saw that they turned from their evil way, and he repented of the evil that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So the story spoke of Jonah. He's a very familiar person in the Bible to us. What was Jonah? Jonah was a prophet. Do you know what a prophet is? A prophet is a teacher or someone that was a proclaimer of God's word. The Bible tells of many prophets that God sent to this earth to do his work, particularly in the Old Testament. In Jonah, if we open our Bibles to Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it tells of when God asked Jonah to go and serve the people of Nineveh. In verse 1 it begins with, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. The people of Nineveh were living a life of sin. And God had asked Jonah to go and preach and teach and relay the message of God to the people of Nineveh. God seen the need for Jonah to go and serve those people. God also sees the needs, even in our time, when there is a need for work to be done in his kingdom. Oftentimes, God will call through his congregation to ask each of us to go and serve with the gifts that we have been given. Also, at home, we may be asked to serve in our home life as well. Each of you have been given gifts to serve in God's kingdom and at home. In verse 3, it relays of how Jonah disobeyed that request from God for him to go to Nineveh. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, and to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. When Jonah was told to go to Nineveh, he disobeyed. This was not what God had asked him to do. As you can see on the map there, that we can see that Nineveh is the opposite direction of Tarshish. When Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh, he went down to Joppa, jumped on a boat, and tried to sail across the sea there in the opposite direction. Have you ever been asked to serve or do something by your parents or possibly a teacher? And you went and did something else instead. Maybe you've been asked to clean your room or help with the dishes after dinner. But you slipped outside and jumped on your bike and instead tried to get out of your duties as Jonah did. Is it always easy for you? Is it always easy for us to obey those duties obey what we've been told? I know it isn't always easy for me. It may, and I would think that it's probably the same for you as well. It's not always easy to be obedient. 
We also may be asked to serve in God's kingdom in many ways. It's important for us to be willing to serve with the gifts that God has given. Don't hide those duties. Don't try to hide from those duties. But when those gifts are recognized by God's kingdom, or those abilities of you being able to help around the home, serve willingly with those gifts that you are given. When Jonah was on the boat, he went down below the deck to sleep. And Jonah knew he had disobeyed God and thought maybe he could hide when he went down below deck on the ship to hide. I could relate to Jonah in that regard myself. And I'm sure you could as well. That when you've been asked to do some duties and you've gone the other direction, what kind of thoughts are going through your mind? Those thoughts are probably very similar to Jonah's. We want to hide. We want to be alone or we want to get away from other people. And maybe we think we can hide from those duties and it won't bother us anymore. From our example earlier, when we were asked to help with the chores in the house and we jumped on our bike and went, maybe we went out to our fort to try and hide. This is an example of the devil telling us what we should do. Even though we know it's wrong, what we are doing is wrong. Sometimes we listen to the devil. The devil is very cunning. And sometimes it's difficult to push the devil to, as we've been taught, the devil's on our shoulder, but try and brush the devil off of your shoulder. When the great storm came, Jonah was found and awakened and to help pray to his God for his safety. In verse 12, it speaks of, And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Jonah knew what he had done was, what he had done was wrong. And he felt guilty at that time for what he had done. He had caused this great storm to come about them and shake the boat around and the great rains you could imagine and the winds and the big waves that are crashing on the boat that Jonah felt guilty for putting them all in danger. And he told those shipmates to cast him overboard. When he he, he told them to cast him overboard because the storm would cease when they did that. How do you think Jonah felt when he was cast into the sea? He was probably very nervous. I know I would be if I was cast into the sea in a raging storm. I would be very scared about what was going to happen to me. When Jonah was sinking in the ocean, God sent a whale to save Jonah. And when Jonah was swallowed by the whale, he was in the belly of the fish for three days. And while he was in the belly of the fish, he prayed to God, thanking him for sending the whale to save him from drowning. Also, Jonah wanted to be forgiven. He knew he, what he had done was wrong, and he wanted those sins to be forgiven. And God had heard the prayers of Jonah. And what did God command that fish to do when he heard the prayers of Jonah? God commanded the fish to spit Jonah out onto dry land. We too, in our lives, can pray to God for strength and ask for forgiveness 
when we have been disobedient in our lives and fallen into sin. When Jonah was on the dry land, God asked Jonah to go a second time to Nineveh. This time, Jonah was obedient. When Jonah went to Nineveh and preached, he told them their city would be destroyed in 40 days. The people of Nineveh believed Jonah and repented of their evil doings. They heard the call of God through his messenger. All of these people of Nineveh that heard the call of God and repented of their evil ways, it was not because of the works that Jonah did. Jonah was simply just a worker in God's kingdom. Jonah went there to preach and teach of God's message. When the people of Nineveh repented from their evil doings, God decided not to destroy the city of Nineveh. He decided to save those, save the city of Nineveh and all the people in it. Jonah became upset that God had spared Nineveh. Why would Jonah become upset when the people of Nineveh, when God had decided not to destroy the city. Jonah thought that the people of Nineveh should suffer and be punished for the evil doings, for that worldly lifestyle that they were living. It's an important message for us as workers in God's kingdom and believers to simply be obedient in the duties that we are asked to do. We do not need to burden ourselves with trying to decide who is worthy of God's forgiveness, but simply serve in God's kingdom as we are asked to serve. We can see in this example that God loves all people, even the sinners, even the people of Nineveh that were living that terrible life of sin that God at one point thought that maybe he would destroy the whole city because it was so sinful. But even them, when they wished to repent of those sins, God decided to spare them. The gospel of forgiveness is for all that have a penitent heart and wish to believe their sins forgiven. That gospel is for anybody in this world that wishes to believe and truly wants to believe their sins forgiven. There's much for us to learn in this story of Jonah and how we can still relate to the story today. In the story of Jonah, we learned of disobedience, and obedience, how we can serve at home and also serve in God's kingdom, and the importance of forgiving one another. And even today, boys and girls, mothers and fathers, each of you can believe all of your sins forgiven in Jesus' name and precious blood. Here are a few topics for discussion. How do you think Jonah felt when he was cast into the raging sea? What were Jonah's thoughts and prayers like when he was inside the whale's belly? Is it always easy to forgive someone? If not, why? How are some ways that you can serve or help at home? What are some ways you can serve or help at church or duties in God's kingdom?
Thank you for joining us for Sunday School today. We will now sing song 363, O Praise Emmanuel. After that, we will end this lesson with our closing prayer and benediction. In closing, we will sing song 352, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Have a happy fall, and remember to join us next time. Our next Sunday School video will be on November 28th. Let's fold our hands and say the closing prayer together. O Lord, most loving and merciful Savior, who called little children to come unto Thee and laid Thy hands on them, look upon us, we humbly beseech Thee, and bless us, Thy children. Bestow upon us Thy saving grace and help us to remember our Creator in the days of our youth. Teach us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Bless, O Lord, the instruction which we have received this hour, and grant that thy precious word may be so grafted into our hearts as to bring forth the fruits of righteousness to the honor and glory of thy name. Be gracious unto all of us. Preserve us from all danger. Deliver us from the power of the evil one and from the wickedness that is in the world. Defend us by day and night. Unite us in the bonds of Christian love and receive us at last to thyself in thy heavenly kingdom. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll say the benediction. The Lord bless us and keep us. 
The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.